I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar on NIST Cybersecurity Framework Workforce Development Solutions. I'm going to hand things over now to our Cybersecurity Product Manager here at New Horizons, Mr. Buck Chell. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Buck Chell, the Product Manager for Cybersecurity at the New Horizons Corporate Office. I'd also like to welcome you to today's webinar and also frame it for you, which is going to be the eighth out of ten cybersecurity focus, focus webinars that New Horizons is hosting in the month of October. And if you're not aware, October has been designated by the U.S. federal government as National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, which is an annual campaign to raise awareness about the importance of cybersecurity. Uh, cybersecurity Awareness Month has started to gain observance worldwide. It's now in its 15th year. The goal of New Horizons Cybersecurity uh, Awareness Month webinars, which now is our third year as an annual campaign, is to provide you with input from subject matter experts on different cybersecurity topics to help enhance your organization's cyber resilience and overall cybersecurity posture. The 10 cybersecurity webinars that New Horizons is hosting this month cover multiple aspects about today's ever-evolving cyber threat landscape. Um, if you've missed any of the eight or the seven previous webinars, you can find those uh, and recordings uh, along with different assets, if you go to NewRisons.com, find a local center, and you can see under the promotions page the Cybersecurity Month landing page, which has all the webinars, the recording links, and uh, different assets that you can download for free. Over the last few years, organizations have begun to adopt cybersecurity frameworks, with the NIST cybersecurity framework having become one of the most popular. Uh, one of the most difficult parts of integrating any cybersecurity framework is the process of figuring out how to apply it with organizations, which brings us to today's session, this cybersecurity framework workforce development solutions. Today's presenter is Rick Lemieux, who's the co-founder of ITSM Solutions. Rick is responsible for overseeing uh, sales, marketing, and business development programs. He's been involved in developing and marketing IT cybersecurity workforce solutions, uh, development solutions for the past 15 years. Uh, Rick has been a driving force behind many companies, including NISTCSF.com, ITSMMentor.com, CareerAcademy.com, eLearnAfrica.com, Agile Sales and Marketing. He is a certified IT professional and was recently identified as one of the top five IT entrepreneurs in the state of Rhode Island by the Tech 10 Awards for his work in developing innovative online workforce development solutions for IT, cybersecurity, and business professionals. Uh, Rick Lemieux is on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and we are delighted to have him today. Rick, welcome. You now have the floor. Thanks, Buck, and thanks to everyone on the call today for uh, being part of this presentation on uh, the NIST Cybersecurity Framework Workforce Development Solutions. We first work, work through the agenda. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the business cybersecurity challenge, and it's a real big challenge. Uh, as many of you might be aware, um, I think it was published this past week or so that there are basically three million jobs open globally uh, for cybersecurity professionals. So, needless to say, there's a lot of work to be done on the work on the workforce development front uh, to fill the, to fill those uh, openings that are out there today. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about the NIST cybersecurity framework itself, how it came about, where it's where it's at right now, and where it's going. I'm going to follow that up uh, with a discussion about the NIST Cybersecurity Workforce Framework, which is also part of the NIST uh, Cybersecurity Initiative in terms of defining the roles that uh, exist within a cybersecurity organization. The government has spent a lot of money uh, putting this together in partnership with NIST so that it could provide organizations, you know, with some guidance on, you know, how to basically hire the right people to fill those roles that are uh, within a cybersecurity program. I'm going to do a quick introduction to NISCSF.com, which is a uh, program that we put together in partnership with academia and the government to create a standardized you know, set of curricula, um, you know, labs and, and uh, cyber, cyber range training programs to help individuals you know, get through the process of getting trained and certified, basically to acquire the credentials to be hired into organizations looking to uh, you know, fill their, uh, their cybersecurity organization. And then I'm going to uh, touch briefly on a few of the training programs that are available today that are offered uh, through New Horizons uh, as part of their overall training portfolio. Let me first talk a little bit about, you know, the challenge. And, and this is, you know, something that's been talked about 
for a long time now. And, you know, we're starting to make some progress in, in, in developing or launching solutions that will help, you know, close this, this massive skills gap that exists, you know, within the cybersecurity landscape today. You know, what's interesting is those who are causing us the problem, if you will, the bad guys, you know, they are very well trained and, and very well organized. So they kind of got a, you know, head start on, you know, uh, beating us to the point where they can break, in, break into our infrastructures and, and steal our information as we read about every day in the paper or on the internet. Every day there's another new breach. I think the most recent one was the Facebook breach, which is becoming a really big problem uh, for Facebook and for those who are members of Facebook. So once again, you know, we're, we're really behind the eight ball here and, and the government has done a really good job of making significant investments, you know, in um, developing a, you know, uh, a referenceable framework, the NIST cybersecurity framework, along with, uh, you know, developing, you know, pathways to, uh, you know, the roles that need to be filled in order to, you know, fill out the workforce that will, you know, protect us against those bad guys and the breaches that are happening, um, you know, every single day. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, the latest numbers are about 3 million uh, open positions worldwide. Now, you know, when, I, when they say 3 million, that's really a combination of two different things. It's a combination of being able to, you know, retool your existing workforce. And when I say workforce, I'm not just talking about, you know, the IT organization or the cybersecurity organization. I'm talking about the entire workforce because everyone is involved in, in you know, organizational cybersecurity. It all starts, you know, with the average employee who is util utilizing the tool sets, the digital tool sets that are provided by the corporation to do their job. You know, they're being attacked every day. They're being attacked through email. They're being attacked uh, through the software on their systems. They're being attacked through the apps that they download on their phones, on their computers. You know, it's really, um, you know, it, it's, it's really a crazy situation out there. So we need to basically make sure that we train every employee on cybersecurity based on the role and responsibility responsibility they play within an organization. So if I'm, you know, Rick in the accounting department, I need to learn more about phishing emails. I need to learn more about how to utilize social media, removal devices, things that are part of my day-to-day -day business routine that I don't even think about. I just do, I click and, and, and off to you know, get my job done. But the problem is a lot of these emails that are coming in, you know, contain malware. So as soon as you click on it or click on the link, the malware gets loaded into your computer and then spreads its way through the network where they gain access to the information that they're looking to steal. What's interesting is that when they come into your infrastructure, you know, they sit there for a long time and they're basically in reconnaissance mode looking for what's out there and what might be of value to them and then working on ways to get that, you know, basically transported over to where they are. So we really need to spend the time to train, you know, all employees on, you know, good cyber behavior, you know, and basically make them, you know, kind of, um, you know, aware of the things that could be devastating you know, to the overall company. That extends itself into the IT organization, you know, where you've got network engineers and application engineers and software engineers or software developers. They all need to be trained, uh, you know, in, in terms of the things that they're responsible for and really approach these things from a security point of view, especially the software and application developers because they're obviously creating applications that create new services for an organization. But let's face it, if they don't do that in a secure way, they just created another you know, vulnerability point for the organization to be attacked. And so we really need to spend the time there as well. I guess last but not least, and probably first, is the executive team and board members of an organization. You know, they need to understand you know, what their roles and responsibilities are in terms of cybersecurity investments and basically capabilities. They need to view this as an organizational capability. They need to make those investments and they need to continually be improving, you know, that capability on an ongoing basis because as we all know, the threat landscape is changing every microsecond as another Internet of Things device gets connected to the infrastructure, as more software is downloaded, you know, as more users, you know, gain access or have access you know, to your systems. So we really need to make sure that, you know, that the executive teams need to make sure that the proper investments are being made, you know, in order to protect the organization. Let me spend a second um, talking about the NIST cybersecurity framework. Uh, this is something near and dear to me. I've been involved in this from the initial launch. I spent about a year uh, in the field meeting with um, 
academic, government, and private institution partners to really understand, you know, the situation. I mean, obviously, you know, cybersecurity as itself has been kind of a dysfunctional thing. I mean, we've all known about it for a long time. We all thought about it in terms of, you know, firewalls and intrusion detection systems and, you know, certified ethical hackers. But we really never thought about it as an organizational thing. And, and we really had no way to do that because there was no referenceable framework outside of some proprietary solutions that were being promoted by different vendors. So we really never took it seriously. But as the problem continued to get worse, and the internet continued to grow and more devices were being connected and more attacks were being successful, you know, it became something, uh, you know, of kind of a, you know, a national issue. And that's when the government stepped in and said, listen, we need to put together a referenceable framework. They originally were trying to do it, you know, just directly from private industry. That wasn't working. They tried to do it through the legislative agenda. That wasn't working. And then they finally decided to reach out to the National Institutes of technology and standards, NIST, you know, to get them to drive that, you know, that agenda. And the, the whole concept behind the framework was that of a, you know, built around a, a collaborative model, both of government, private industry, and academia. And, and it was also built around being a voluntary framework so that, you know, we, we built it, you now have a referenceable framework, and you are free to choose to adopt it or not adopt it. That's pretty much how things started. And that was in, um, you know, it was published in February of 2014 and then updated, you know, in, um, in 2018. Clearly, it's, it's, it's something that, you know, not only fits organizations here in the U.S., but organizations worldwide. In fact, uh, the framework itself has now been adopted. I think it's up to 29 countries. It's extremely popular in the Middle East and in Asia and in Europe. It's uh, it's really starting to take off. Uh, those those countries have you know not only adopted it as it is, but have have also contributed uh, to other things that the that they wanted to see in the framework. So it's really a, you know overall it's a global collaborative you know, initiative. One of the key events that happened um, you know when President Trump took office was he issued an executive order to make the cybersecurity framework mandatory for all federal agencies. And so what that basically meant is that, you know, the organizations had to adopt the framework and had to prove, you know, to to the government that they that they have done that. The first step in that process was for all of these organizations to do an assessment. Uh, and as you know, things move kind of slowly at the in the government. So that took about a year to put together. It came out a few months ago, it was issued, uh, all the reports were issued to the Office of Management and Budget. They, in turn, consolidated it all into one report uh, back to the president. And basically what it showed uh, is that 75% of all federal agencies are way below where they need to be. I don't know about you, but that, that scares the living daylights out of me because without the government and the capabilities that the government provides, we could have chaos on our hands very quickly. So now they're working with the OMB, they're working with Congress, they're trying to figure out, you know, how do we close all these gaps? So Congress is, you know, passing a series of bills, allocating monies, and so on and so forth to at least, you know, allow these organizations, these agencies to put in place, you know, the controls associated with the framework to improve their cybersecurity and make that as part of a continual, you know, cybersecurity improvement program. The framework itself is is a risk based approach to cybersecurity. So it's focused in on you know managing cybersecurity risk within an organization. And there are three key components associated with the framework. There's the framework core, which you know, basically describes you know the, the desired outcomes and it's it's expressed as functions. Okay, so things that you need to have in place as functions in order to achieve the outcomes that the framework you know uh, describes. There are implementation tiers. And it basically describes how, you know, cybersecurity is practiced and, and, and it's informed by business needs, okay? So that, you know, if your business is, is a financial services company and you have these specific needs, you put in place the controls that are associated with, you know, the financial service marketplace. Same thing for healthcare, energy, government, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and then the third element is the profiles. And that's where it aligns, you know, the core with resources and tolerances set up, you know, through policies that organizations want to adhere to. And then basically it's also used to define you know, your current state and your future state. So every uh, cybersecurity framework 
implementation uh, starts with an assessment. And that assessment is where you go through and identify, you know, where you're at, where your gaps are at, what your score is at. And then, you know, you, you, you set yourself a target score. You build a risk treatment plan to get to that target score. You make the, the necessary changes. You implement the necessary controls. And then you reassess yourself and, you, and you'll see, you know, how, how much you've improved and how close you are to your goal as an organization in terms of the NIST cybersecurity framework. Spend a second talking about the NIST slash NICE. The NICE stands for the National Institute of Cybersecurity Education, uh, Cybersecurity Workforce Framework. Uh, this framework, uh, the workforce framework, was originally released in November of 2016. Uh, the update was just released, I believe it was about a week or two ago, uh, and basically has been, you know, dramatically updated. It was originally uh, put together in partnership with the Department of Defense, and they were pretty well organized on cybersecurity roles and responsibilities, you know, for their organization. Uh, it's been, you know, uh, substantially modified and updated to be more reflective of, uh, you know, the needs of commercial enterprises. It was designed to serve, you know, several key groups, including employers, candidates, educators, trainers, and technology providers. So it's really a set of guidance. It doesn't tell you what, it just tells you, you know, it doesn't tell you how, it just tells you the what. Okay, so you need to figure out how this fits into your organization. It's extremely flexible so that, you know, folks like our, myself can go out and develop you know, curricula that will allow us to train people to, you know, to deliver on those roles. Uh, it will also provide organizations a way to kind of build out their, you know, their, you know, their people structure in terms of their particular programs. It also provides technology providers with some really good guidance on how to, you know, develop their technological solutions um, and the uh, training programs that go along with them. It's focused in on, you know, really enabling individuals or organizations to acquire the knowledge, skills, abilities, and credentials to perform, you know, a cybersecurity role and a specialty role. So, for instance, you know, um, if you look at the, the workforce framework, it not only describes the roles, it, it, it identifies the, you know, knowledge, skills, and abilities associated with those roles, it identifies the credentials both at the academic level and the certificate level. And then it also um, uh, provides a pathway to uh, locate jobs. They've actually developed a CyberSeq tool, which is really good in partnership with CompTIA. Uh, and it allows you to understand, you know, where the opportunities are, you know, what are the particular opportunities that are available by role, uh, how much do they pay, you know, so on and so forth. And so that really helps out, you know, a candidate to, you know, plan their, not only their career pathway from, an, you know, from a training point of view, but also plan out their career pathway from an employment point of view. Really, really good system, well worth the investment they made. The uh, workforce is actually defined into uh, seven different categories or, you know, workforce categories including that of, you know, those who are responsible for provisioning digital services to those who are responsible for operating and maintaining it, overseeing and governing it, you know, protecting and defending it, analyzing it, collecting and operating and investigating. So this really covers both what I call the general roles and the specific roles or the specialty roles. And what I mean by that is, let's face it, I mean, cybersecurity uh, organizations are just like traditional IT organizations. You need people who can engineer them. You need people who can, you know, manage and operate them. And you need people who, who basically are responsible for, you know, working with the business. And in this case, managing the business risk. So they're communicating with the lines of business to say, okay, you want to offer this new service. It, you know, it, it introduces this level of new risk to the organization. Is the return on investment worth the risk? Okay, so that's all part of the process. Those are the general roles associated with a NIST cybersecurity, you know, workforce organization. And then you take that to the next level. So it, you get into the specialty roles. So those are the people who are responsible for, let's say, doing an audit. Uh, basically doing pen testing, you know, testing the integrity of the cybersecurity program, uh, doing certified ethical hacking, you know, to see how easy it is to break into your system, as well as to, you know, collect the information to, you know, to complete or, you know, begin the process of an investigation after a breach. You know, you really want to know, you know, why did it happen? Where did it happen? How do we prevent it from happening again? The other thing that organizations need to think about from a workforce point of view 
is resiliency because it's absolutely mandatory that as part of your program, you know, you have a way to deal with a successful breach in terms of business continuity and recovery. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is this breach takes you down and you're out of business for three, four, five days. And for some organizations, that will put them out of business, let alone the fines that they're going to suffer on the back end of this whole thing. So it's really, really important for organizations to, you know, to basically put in place these capabilities uh, to make sure that, you know, they're they're properly protected and also resilient to in terms of recovery. Now, you may be sitting there going, well, that's all well and good for the big companies who have lots of money to make this happen. How does a small to medium sized business deal with this? And once again, they have the opportunity to do it themselves. There are the trainings and the tool sets and the monies out there to help SMBs. Congress just passed a new law. Uh, focus specifically on SMBs and providing funding to help them become more secure, or they can actually work with a managed, you know, service, uh, uh, you know, security provider, an MSSP, you know, someone who can provide those services to organizations who are not capable uh, or don't have the staff to do it themselves. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about NISCSF.com. Uh, NISCSF.com is about a year old now. Uh, it was um, originally conceived uh, through a partnership uh, with my company and the University of Massachusetts. Uh, its focus is that it, it's basically a consortium that's been created by, by ITSM Solutions, my company, uh, and academia and other industry partners to create a standardized you know, set of accredited curricula for this cybersecurity uh, framework workforce development. All right? As I mentioned earlier, the cybersecurity market has been kind of dysfunctional, disorganized. There's a lot of certifications out there. They're all great certifications like CISSP and Security Plus, and they're still absolutely relevant. And in fact, they're even defined in the NIST cybersecurity framework. I mean, the CIS cybersecurity uh, workforce framework. Um, but we are kind of heading in a new direction right now where we need some additional trainings and certifications and labs and you know trainings that will allow us you know, to learn the knowledge and skills and how to operationalize the framework. So while all these other things are important for general security concepts or some of the specialty roles that I mentioned earlier, you know, we're really focused in on building the baseline workforce across an organization. And, you know, and that's where, that's the focus of NISCSF.com. They're working towards creating the curriculum and the tool sets to support that. Uh, the genesis of this program was based on a, uh, uh, professionalizing cybersecurity report uh, created at uh, Salve Regina University here in my home state of Rhode Island by uh, Francesca Spinelli and Lieutenant Colonel Sean Kern of the National Defense University. They spent a lot of time researching, you know, the cybersecurity uh, market from a, um, you know, a, from a professional uh, development point of view, and they really discovered the thing I said earlier, and that is that it was dysfunctional and disorganized. And they really started to do some comparisons in the cybersecurity space to that of the professional spaces of accounting and lawyers and other people who are responsible for very important things in our day-to-day -day lives and the, and the process that they have to go through to become certified and accredited and licensed to practice within their professions. They couldn't understand why that didn't exist within cybersecurity. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that you know, no one really thought cybersecurity was something that important until we started to experience you know, what we're experiencing now. So they, they did a fair amount of research in pulling together the data uh, to basically you know, put, put forth a, you know, a, a solution on how to get that done. You know, the, 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 the goal of, of the NISCSF.com is, is to really not only to build this curriculum, but to provide it to high schools, community colleges, universities, and private training companies like New Horizons, you know, to basically enable them to, you know, uh, develop this workforce. So whatever pathway you choose to get into cybersecurity or upgrade, upgrade your skill sets to be a cybersecurity professional, you know, you have multiple pathways to get there. The, the main thing is that everyone's learning the same thing so that when you come together as a group, you know, you've all been trained on the basic principles, you know, in the same way. And so that allows you to operate as a team and that allows you to, to deliver a successful outcome or to basically help an organization, you know, operationalize things like the cybersecurity framework across their enterprise. 
Um, the program itself, and this NCSF program, is built around you know three training tracks. As I mentioned earlier, there's an engineering track, there's a technical analyst track, or you know business operations, and then there's a you know analyst track, which we're really tied to business governance, and and, and I'll cover that in a second. But let me first uh, start on the engineering track. Um, from a delivery point of view, we we design the the, the program to be delivered in you know in, in multiple venues. I mean, there are those of us who love classroom and online classroom training delivered by a, you know, a certified instructor. There are some of us who like self-study or blended, a combination of both the self-study, you know, and the uh, instructor-led time. And so we, it's really designed to create, you know, maximum flexibility because our lives are so crazy. We have very little time to go back to school or get ourselves updated, and this gives you the capability to do it, you know, in multiple formats. Uh, from a curriculum point of view, you know, the engineering track is really designed to, first of all, you know, enable the individual with the practitioner level skills. So that's the skills required to, you know, to engineer a program. So you enough, you know enough about the framework, you know enough about the control systems associated with the framework, and you know enough about engineering principles to bring all that together. You know, that's combined with, you know, with online labs where you can then apply as an individual you know, the theoretical skills that you've learned in a in a simulated environment, you know, that's followed up by, you know, working in, in with a cyber range. A cyber range is uh, basically, a, I guess, is a piece of software, the best way to describe it, that simulates an entire infrastructure. So it allows you to go in and it's loaded up with, you know, malware and other cybersecurity type, you know, problems that you need to identify so that as you go through that process in the simulated environment, as part of an overall team, you'll be able to translate that into, you know, what you do on your day-to-day -day job. That's followed up with certification trainings. So obviously, it's becoming, you know, the credentials are becoming important uh, to organizations and, you know, as part of the hiring process. And then we've also included in our program uh, the, the ability to teach individuals how to do an assessment or how to be part of an assessment team. Because that's, you know, the assessment is where it all begins, as I think I mentioned earlier. And it's really important for everyone in the organization to understand what exactly is does the assessment do and what exactly is my role in the assessment. Because, you know, they're collecting a lot of information from a lot of different people and answering a lot of questions, which will help determine, you know, how secure they really are, what their cybersecurity score is in regards to the framework. So everyone needs to have some baseline knowledge in that. There are the folks who will run it, so they need to have more advanced knowledge. But the, the, there are those of us who just participate and, and need to know how to participate. And that's part of the program that we offer. And as you can see, we've kind of lined that up with the, uh, with the workforce categories that were on the previous slide as part of the NIST cybersecurity workforce framework. So the folks in engineering really focus in on the security, securely provisioning and analyzing portion of, you know, of the uh, workforce framework. On the technical analyst front, once again, very similar pathway, but taught along the lines of, you know, operations and improvement, okay? So as it says here, you know, they align, you know, with the workforce categories of operate, maintain, protect and defend, collect and operate. And then there's the business analyst track. And as you notice, each one of these individuals will go down a, a specific pathway, but there'll be some particulars associated with each one of these specific to each of these roles. So for instance, you'll notice in the business analyst track that we have a governance certification. So that's where they would go through uh, like COVID training uh, and other types of trainings that are available uh, for you know governance best practices. And the workforce categories are pretty, you know, pretty well defined and oversee a government and investigate. Okay, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about a couple of the certification programs that are available today uh, and through the New Horizons Network. Uh, the first is the, uh, the NIST Cybersecurity Framework uh, slash CFM. CFM stands for Controls Factory Model. Um, and let me just take a second to explain that. Um, in putting these programs together, we were, you know, we were fortunate enough to work with uh, the University of Massachusetts and their Chief Information Security Officer, Larry Wilson. Some of you may know Larry. Some of you may have attended a conference where Larry has spoken. Uh, he does the Secure World conferences all over the all over the country, along with several other events. He's a fantastic speaker. He knows this topic cold. He's the one who built the program for the university. The university has adopted that program across its five campuses, 
And they did that so well that word got out and other universities came to Lowry to help them do the same thing. So UMass has gone out and helped uh, probably 25, 30 other universities in the Massachusetts area to help them do the same thing. It has now expanded to governments and you know private companies and so on. So it's really starting to take off. And one of the key components associated with Lowry's program is this controls factory model. And the model or methodology is really an easy way to operationalize the control systems that are identified in the framework. So for instance, one of the control systems is the Center for Internet Security 20 critical controls or 20 critical security controls. Um, Larry's you know, developed an approach on how to do that and do it you know, seamlessly and easily. It doesn't require a rocket scientist. It's really, really simple. The other thing is that the controls factory model can do the same thing for, for programs like you know, um, ISO 27001 or COBIT or NIST 853 or NIST 800171. Some of these terms might be familiar, some of them are not, some of them might not be, but the point is is that the controls factory model is designed to allow an organization to adopt and adapt or operationalize the things that are you know, necessary for their business to improve you know, their cybersecurity score and their cybersecurity capabilities. So this foundation program is a one-day classroom or a four-hour video program that teaches the fundamentals of the NIST cybersecurity framework and the UMass Controls Factory model. All right, so it's really geared towards those who, you know, need to have a basic understanding to perform their jobs, you know, as executives, accountants, lawyers, information technology professionals, anyone who has kind of a passive role but really needs to know about it in order to do their job. And they even participate with those who have an active role in developing the, the program, doing the assessments, and so on and so forth, okay? The program itself, as I mentioned, is one day, eight hours or four hours videos, and it comes with you know, the necessary credentials, including a certification, professional certification, college credits, PDUs and CEUs for you know, ongoing professional development. The practitioner course is where we do a deep dive in helping you know, those who are responsible for the engineering operations and business risk to acquire those how-to skills on how to engineer, implement, test, and maintain you know, in this cybersecurity program. Um, the, the, the program itself uh, is, once again, focused in a, on those who have active roles as engineers, testers, operators, and continuous improvement professionals. It's four days in length in the classroom or virtual classroom, or it can be delivered as a self-paced video program. I think there's about 12 hours of video combined with some other study requirements and so on and so forth. And just like the foundations, it comes with a professional certification and it delivers college credits and professional development credits around PDUs and, and CEUs. Uh, the third is a, a series of video training programs that, that we've brought together to help individuals, you know, acquire what we call the baseline certifications that are identified, you know, in the NIST cybersecurity framework. In other words, I talk about these credentials, or the workforce framework, the credentials that you need to have. So not only do you need to have, you know, cybersecurity certifications and trainings, but you also need to have, you know, network trainings and, uh, you know, uh, software development trainings and other things that are required as part of the credentials that are identified in the workforce framework. So this, this video training portfolio provides you a way to get that training uh, to prepare for those examinations, to fill out your portfolio in order to meet the requirements that are outlined you know, in the workforce framework. <clears throat> okay, let me just go back. I just kind of jumped ahead here and I explained the next slide first, but this one here is the boot camp. And the boot camp is just a combination of the um, the foundation and the practitioner program delivered as one program. Uh, the key difference here is the programs are identical to what's delivered individually. The key difference here is the exam, uh, where if you take the foundation and then follow that with the practitioner, there are two separate exams that get delivered. If you take it as a boot camp where you combine the two of them in a classroom, it's over a five-day period, there's one exam that you take uh, to achieve, you know, the practitioner certification. It'll combine both the foundation and practitioner exams as one exam. That's the key difference. And I think that's about it for me. And definitely at this point would like to uh, open the floor to questions. So Kelly, I'll uh, hand it back to you at this point.
All right. Thank you so much, Rick. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. If you guys have any questions for Rick, we'll go ahead and stay on the line for the next few minutes and address those over audio. In the meantime, I wanted to remind everyone that today's session is being recorded. You will all receive a recording link later today, as well as the slide deck to review anything you may have missed. Um, I encourage you all to reach out to your local New Horizons for further information. And if you are not familiar with uh, your local New Horizons, you can log on to our website at newhorizons.com and do a zip code search to find the center nearest you. On our website, you will also find all of our past webinar recordings in our archive library. Uh, we have over 100 past webinar recordings that you can view at any time and learn, um, you know, different tips and tricks and things like that. So those are all free for you. So I hope you do uh, take advantage of that as well. And um, Rick, it looks like we don't have any questions. So I think we can go ahead and wrap up today's session. So thank you again so much for joining us and speaking on behalf of New Horizons. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. And thanks again, everyone, for joining us. I hope you'll join us for future webinars. Thanks so much and have a great day.